Broadcasting live on WNN, 1470 AM, 95.3 FM, iHeartRadio, and the World Wide Web, this is Make America Think Again with your Google Blacklisted host, Tom Trento. Danger, Will Robinson. Danger. No, Will Robinson. Danger. And we're going to go to Hawaii, Iowa, Nebraska, <laughs> and Florida, and... Oh wait, who was that? Who was that crazy guy? That was Biden. That was Biden. Who was that, that Howard guy? Dean. Howard Dean. Know where he is? <laughs> where is Dean? We're going there. We're going there. Hey, welcome to Election Day, twenty two. Two years, Susie Gold, of work. Yeah. Two years every day, yeah. every night. What do you think, guys? A lot of work went into today. This is going to be fantastic. Yeah, a lot of enthusiasm, a lot of energy, and you know, crowds gathering, emotions running high. All to culminate on election day, and, we'll and I yelled find at, a, out I yelled the at a Biden guy in a way to work that he's holding a body and like, "You're <laughs> nuts! You're nuts!" Another One. guy, uh, he, um, stopped at a, a light. Hispanic guy in a car, jacket, tie. He he says to me, "Hey, how you doing?" I said, "Good, good." I said, "It's election day. I'm doing great." I said, "Who are you voting for?" And he goes, "Uh, Biden." I said, "Biden? Why? Uh, change? I want change." I said, he's a Marxist. He's a socialist. What are you doing? You know, and he just sped up. You, sh- you of all people should know. And he just takes off. He, take, get, he gets in the car and takes Well, maybe off. something you said made his yeah, mind change. Got him knows. thinking. What a show we had. You know what I, I heard this morning on the radio is that some people, as they're walking out of the polls and people ask, well, who'd you vote for? You know, they're afraid of backlash. Yeah, I know. Yeah, so they're yeah, going to yeah. say whatever they, is expected of them to say. So we really don't know what, Hello? In the, you know, when that person actually voted. Laura, well, I have a surprise here. video for you. Laura is here, and guys. Our, well, let my... me introduce the show first, okay. and we'll do that. Um, the um, uh, You're talking about the, they're called shy voters. The yeah. Trump shy, I, I'm one of them, in a sense, believe it or What's not. I don't have a you? nice car. You're shy? Laura, but I, <laughs> we have I wouldn't put a bumper sticker on my car. No, I wouldn't on either. On my beat-up truck. I wouldn't. You have more? All right, well, Mark, hang on. We'll, we'll on? get to her in a second. I wouldn't put a bumper oh, no, sticker right, right, right. on, no. on, the, on no. the car because they're going to throw a rock at it. Right. I don't want anybody the, scratching my car. The whole concept of this is, is crazy. We've got a great show today. Very important to get out and vote. Ron DeSantis was just on Fox saying Florida's doing great. We're going to talk about that. we got Laura coming up in a minute. We also have uh, Liz Harrington from yep. the Trump campaign. We have um, my analysis, my PPP analysis as to who's going to win. We'll do that later. Everybody here is going to do their predictions. Um, we're going to talk about the Marxist insurrection that uh, is uh, is imminent. And then my Israeli defense force, force yeah. shirt. And symbolically, I'm wearing because of the importance of Donald Trump getting reelected for the Middle East, for the security of the world, and particularly for Israel. So you want to bring Laura on and we'll get the sure, show on the road. Sure. We're so happy to welcome Laura Loomer. As as most of you who are listeners, regular listeners know that we bring Laura on uh, several times a week and uh, we get updates. She's a dear friend. We strongly support her. And those who have not gone out to vote yet, please, if you're in di- Laura's district, you got to click on her. She's right below Donald Trump on the ballot. Vote for Laura because what she's going to do in Congress is like none other. She, she will bulldoze uh, lazy. Lois, uh, District 21. She will be the Congresswoman because you have a very, very intelligent district. So welcome, Laura Loomer. God willing, our next Congresswoman. Yeah, How Good are morning. you, Laura? I'm, I'm doing well, you know. You got to uh, unmute. Uh, and, uh, unmute she's got to be exhausted. She's been out there. Her whole team has been going out there knocking on doors. She's got a vibrant, uh-huh. vibrant volunteers that I kind of make that analogy between Donald Trump and Laura Loomer because they're both like rock stars. And Dragon they've got energy. an incredible yeah. group of uh, volunteers right. that are helping along the way. It. It's called Is Dragon she on? Energy. Yeah, she's on. She's Is not she on? muted, Laura, guys. You're with us? Yeah, I got it. I got it. Can you hear it's me? Yeah, it's my fault. My fault. Can you hear me? Yep, yes, we yes, can yes, hear, we hear you. you. Welcome, Laura. Good morning. Yeah, so it's exciting. I'm at the polls this morning, uh, bouncing around to various polling locations. The lines are much shorter today, so if you haven't voted, just go out and vote because the line there's a there's a ton of different voting locations today, not just the ones uh, you know on the early voting sites. So so get out and vote. We need we need every Republican 
voter to turn out and vote. Okay, it's all about the Republican turnout now. Because, as you know, a lot of Democrats, they already voted. Uh, they did early voting. They did uh, mail-in voting. But regardless of what your political affiliation is, get out and vote. And vote down-ballot Republican if you want to save this country. Because I just I can't imagine. I, I can't imagine what this country would look like if we had Joe Biden as president. And if you want to get rid of Lois Frankel, I mean, a lot of Democrats, I mean, a lot of independents and a ton of Republicans who can't stand her then go and cast your vote for me, Laura Loomer, for Congress today, because um, it's neck and neck. And this race, when I win, you know, it's going to come down to a very slim margin. So every single vote counts. Don't let anyone tell you that you're just one person and your vote doesn't count. Every single vote counts. Yep. They got to get out there. Everybody click on that button. Like Laura said, right below Donald Trump, you will see in her district, you will see Laura Loomer positioned so well. Uh, and and click on Republican and uh, every single person, just like Laura said, listen to her, go out, make sure that your vote counts. So thank you, Laura. So how is it looking for you? Here we are. Last well, day, election day. You know, we are, we had we had a lot of uh, a lot of excitement throughout uh, early voting and uh, I'm meeting people every day. We have people knocking doors. There's a lot of momentum, a lot of energy. People are very excited. I mean, every day I hear from people, wow, Lois Frankel doesn't have a single campaign sign out in the district. And that's true. She doesn't. She's not campaigning. OK, she's not working hard like I am every single day with my my team of volunteers to get to get the. Uh, uh, you know, voters to, to vote for me so that we can flip this seat red. Uh, but but we're um, we're very confident. But of course, it just comes down to Republican turnout. So everyone, you know, call. I'm calling on every single person listening to this radio show right now to call 10 of your friends and have them call 10 of their friends and ask them if they voted today. The polls close at 7 p.m. OK, that means that if you're in line by 7 p.m., you can you can you can vote. So you need to get to the polls by 7 p.m. to cast your vote. Right. Very important. And, and they can't be turned away. So, so if you're in line at seven o'clock and that line is a mile long, you will be allowed to vote. That's right. So you just got to be in be that line. To vote. Just make sure just make sure that you're at the correct polling location and you can go online and you can find your polling location by typing in your address and. Um, or it's on your voter registration card or wherever you voted last um, if you, you haven't changed your address since the last election. Uh, but, but it's just at this point in time, you know, there's, um, there's what, 10 hours left till the polls close, a little, a little under 10 hours. So we need every single person to get out and vote. That's all it's coming down to now is just voter turnout. That's, That's all right. that can really be done today. Yep. 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 And, yep. and Laura, you've done an amazing, amazing job uh, with your campaign and, and people know where you stand. Right. They uh, you have addressed the issues. You have brought issues to the forefront and lazy Lois has been in the basement. I think Mark has a question for you. Yeah, I hear you uh, busted up uh, the fake Kamala. Yesterday. Yeah, yeah, tell us about, about that. that. Yeah, so at the Lantana uh, polling location the other day, the Joe Biden campaign was trying to trick people. And they sent out a stretch limo and this woman who got got out of the, the car, she she kind of looked like Kamala Harris. And then all the staffers and a lot of people in line started chanting, Kamala, Kamala, Kamala. And then I got closer and I was like, this is not Kamala Harris. And it was an actual body double. And their own staffers, like the Democrat staffers at the table outside the polls, thought it was Kamala Harris and they were taking selfies with her. And then when I busted it, you know, when I exposed it and I said, it's a body double, uh, she fled the scene and they, they whisked her away in the stretch limo. So <laughs> they got caught. And, you know, a lot of people, a lot of people have been saying that the, the, the topic of body doubles is a conspiracy theory. You know, you see people on CNN accuse President Trump of having a body double for Melania. Uh, but everything that the Democrats accuse other people of doing, it seems that that's what they're, they themselves are doing or th- are, are guilty of doing. They're classic projectors. So uh, we got... Uh, we got it on video. It's online. It was uh, trending number one this weekend on, on Twitter, from my understanding. And it was all over. The video has been seen millions of times online. Uh, and, yeah, the Kamala Harris body double got busted. Looks like Yeah, the, you caught like him red-handed. The Biden yeah, yeah that's wanna, right. They don't want to send people out to vote. They don't want to put in the hard work to do, the, to, to, to do what it takes to get people to vote, you know? So. And we saw your billboard on 6th Avenue. Was, yeah, thanks. 
Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great there, spot. So wonderful. A beautiful billboard. A big, beautiful billboard. Says vote uh, for Congress. We we didn't want you to know anything about that. It was a surprise. Uh, so, um, you know, so uh, uh, there was no coordination or anything like that, uh, but it was a little surprise. We had um, a donor let us use their billboards and we put a whole variety of messages all over the place. And we said, let's throw something up uh, for Laura. Don't tell her about it, but we'll throw something up. And uh, I love it. Cool. it yeah, looks looks great. Great. Yeah. yeah, surrounded with so much love, Laura. Love for you, love for what you stand for. And also um, those that truly yeah. know what's going on, they know that you will and represent hopefully. the district. You'll go against Ilya Omar. You'll go against the squad, AOC. You have not only I the will. brains, you've got the brawn. You have the experience. <laughs> So, you know what, all to you, Laura, we need you. We need you in Congress. We need your constituents to vote for you, those that haven't vote, voted yet. You know yet. what I'm going to do, Laura, when you're elected? I'm going to actually start watching C-SPAN because I think it may be very interesting. Yeah. You know? We're going to um, make C-SPAN great again. We're yeah, make, make C-SPAN, C-SPAN great, great again. again. <laughs> I, I would pay money <laughs> to see the first encounter between Laura and Ilhan Omar. And yeah. And yeah. <laughs> that would be pay-per-view worthy. She gives chutzpah new meaning. Are you, are you, guys, <laughs> coming to my, you guys are coming to my election party? You have the invites. I texted them to you, so oh, I hope I'll see yeah, you. Yeah, we'll, we'll be there. All Absolutely. Right. Wouldn't miss it. We'll be there in support oh, of you I, and to I celebrate too. with you. I'll you too, Damon. Home. I'm going to be home sleeping. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. So, uh, we, we, Laura. We, have fake, we have the fake Kamala thing. Oh, you, yeah, let's go ahead. Let's show it. Okay. <laughs> And it looks like her. Look at that. Just the hair and a suit. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, all the Biden people are following her like uh, Wow, she looks a lot like her. Look like her. Doesn't this violate some kind of election law? Campaign law? To, to purposely safe being uh, a candidate? Isn't there got to be a law against this? Yeah, there was a fake Trump walking around. Nothing like her. Very deceptive to the voters to send body doubles out. Well, that's Laura in the background. It's not Kamala. It's a fake Kamala Harris. <laughs> that's great that you called her out. Unbelievable. Look at the tactics here. Yeah, yeah, no, you you got to be pretty stupid to be a, a supporter and take pictures with her. You can't recognize it's not really her. Well, That's no one's amazing. seen her without a mask in how long? Yeah. It's hard yeah. to recognize. Yeah. She looks better. With exactly. Her. Yeah. So, yeah. Right. Well, thank you so much, yeah. Laura, for joining in. And we'll see you uh, later tonight. And um, yeah, you know, we're just so excited for you. And uh, a lot and, of work and, went and into we'll this. Thank you. Yeah. Face with her for, during the week, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. yeah definitely. Yeah, we're we're going to follow gonna... you in Congress. We love you, Laura. Thank you. I love you guys too. Get out and vote, guys. Get out Get and out vote. We vote. got a country to save. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> That's right. Thank you so much. Fix the screen. Fix the yeah, screen, whatever that means. Mark, fix the screen. Bye, Laura. Bye, Steve. Laura. Good luck. Good luck. Fix the screen. More information, Miriam, whatever that ne- means. Tom Trento, 917. Uh, two years, all of us here, actually longer. We started with the, the Trump election in 2016, then got even more involved with DeSantis and Gillum. And we saw that DeSantis only won by 31,000 votes. And we said, we got to fight Gillum. He was going to raise a million. Right. We said a million and one evangelical Christians. And thus our spiritual battle for America. We launched it. That's right. Today is the culmination of all that work. It's so exciting. We have, we have Liz. Oh, we, we have, have Liz, Liz on the Liz. line. Yeah. All right. Liz Harrington, Tom Trento here with Susie Gold. How are you, Liz? Hey, I'm great. How are you all? We are excited. This is two years of every day working in Florida. The state is going nuts. Boat parades, car parades, dog parades, airplane parades. <laughs> Motorcycle you parades. Motorcycle parades. <laughs> um, DeSantis was just on Fox saying Florida's in great shape. The numbers are great. Got to turn out. Tell us what's going on, what you know about Florida and the rest of the United States. Oh, absolutely. We are in great shape, but we still got to turn out. Uh, the country depends on it. I mean, this is this is about our freedom. The president has put in the work. 
He's worked his tail off the past five years. And since he got into office, no one has accomplished more. Uh, with such a short period of time, he built the greatest economy. He delivered on his promises. He secured the border. He decimated ISIS. He got better trade deals. He held China accountable. He got three Supreme Court justices. Oh, and three peace deals in the Middle East. Uh, Not too shabby. And we need to support him now. He put in the work. I mean, this weekend, have you seen the crowds? It's unbelievable. The man put in all on the line. He was all across this great country. He was out there rallying with the people where he likes to be best. And we showed up. Now we need to show up. Today, Election Day, it's here. No excuses. Get out and vote. Bring your friends. Bring your neighbor. Convince somebody. Operation Turn a Democrat, like Rush Limbaugh likes to say. It's all on the line here. We're looking great in Florida, but it's up to us. And we can do this thing. We can win it big. All right. We have Liz Harrington with us. She's the um, communications director for the RNC Republican National Convention Committee. A national spokesperson. She's been all over the place on all the talk shows. She's telling exactly what needs to be. I know you got a question for us, yeah. Susie. Exactly what needs to be told. You got to get out. You got to get out. We have a lead here. It, we've, we've decreased the normal lead Democrats have uh, on early voting, all of that. And the turnout usually favors Republicans, but they got to get out. They can't rest. They got to get out. Right. Uh, you mentioned the peace deals in the Middle East. We do a lot of work in Israel and uh, on the national security issues. I have my IDF shirt symbolically for what this president has done for the nation of Israel Mm -hmm. and for the Middle East in general. You got Arab and and Jewish, the Jewish country and Arab countries coming together. Unheard of. We can't have Biden back there empowering and enabling uh, Iran. Yeah. What's amazing is that through everything that was going on, you know, here he's making peace deals. He's uh, accused of hoaxes and all this stuff. And yet he's accomplished so much. It's amazing what he's going to do over the next four years, uh, you know, where he can continue in 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 uh, making sure that our country and our constitution remain intact and and our freedoms uh, remain intact. But but tell me, Liz, what you know, when you look at the key states, you know, take Pennsylvania, um, how how do you think that it fared with regard to Biden's comments about fracking um, and, and how how did that impact those that are voting in those key states? Oh, oh, it's huge because the man lied to everyone's faces. He then got on the debate stage and said, well, not just fracking, all oil, all gas. It's phased out. And then they tried to clean it up. We know what's going on here. They are anti-energy. Oh, you can frack in Ukraine as long as you got the last name Biden. You can look up, uh, link up with some corrupt oligarchs. You can get natural gas in Ukraine. You can do shady corrupt deals with the Chinese Communist Party in China, the biggest LNG port in the world. Hunter Biden was in business with those people. This is the hypocrisy. This is the anti-American agenda. This is the swamp. They get theirs, but they leave the rest of the country behind with this anti-American agenda. Think of it. President Trump, how many years did we hear politicians say, oh, we need energy independence. It's the biggest issue. The Middle East is a mess. You know, we're so dependent on them. What are we going to do? President Trump did it. We are energy independent. And it's Um, largely because of our innovation and our freedom. And fracking is a big part of it. We just topped the biggest export in our history for natural gas. That is huge. That all goes away with the Democrats' agenda. We know who's really running things here. Joe Biden has no clue. He has no control over his party. That's why they're boarding up the cities. Why are they doing that? For Joe Biden supporters. No. Democrat mayors. Yeah, for the Democrat mayors and governors who let them do it. This is appeasement, it's weakness, and it's anti-law and order. Well, that's we're not going to stand for that. And President yeah. Trump is the law and order president. These, these issues are huge, and that's why so many people are coming out. And they, wanna, they want freedom, peace, and prosperity, and that's what you'll get with President Trump. Yeah, and most Americans vote based on the economy and jobs. So what's your comment about what Trump has accomplished and where we're going from here? Oh, absolutely. So we said the three peace deals, uh, he got a third peace deal in the Middle East in one week. 
He got his third Supreme Court justice, and he also got the greatest GDP growth in our nation's history, 33.1%. That V-shaped recovery, they don't have that in Europe, if you've noticed. They don't have that in the rest of the Western world. You know why we have it here? Because of our freedom, because of the policies that President Trump put in place, the tax cuts, the deregulation, unleashing the great engine of this country, which is just our great people who only want to shout at the American dream. That's it. And the choice and opportunity. He built the greatest economy once. We've already seen it coming back like a rocket ship. And that's despite Democrats playing games in New York and California and Michigan, these Democrat governors, Pennsylvania, locking their people down, not letting them innovate, not letting them adapt, not letting them thrive. We can thrive. It, all we need is the tools and the, and the information. We adapt. We succeed. We, we're smart. Americans are smart. They know how to tackle challenges. They know how to solve problems. And Democrat governors are getting in the way. They say lock down. They want to destroy your business. They want to not let you go to church. They want to destroy your, your industry. And we're not going to let that happen. So the economy is a huge issue. Why would you go with anyone else? It's proven. 47 years, Joe Biden never delivered for the middle class. In 47 months, President Trump built the greatest economy in our nation's history in terms of unemployment, wage growth, every single demographic lowest poverty rec uh, levels on record in 2019. 2021 is going to blow it all out of the water because that's yeah. all we need is this great innovation and entrepreneurial spirit, the American spirit, which is out and alive and well. Look at these rallies. Yeah. That's the American spirit that's going to show up today. Wow. Yeah. Hey, well, hey, hey Liz, you're, you're a uh, strategist. I've been I've been giving a lot of thought to this. The um, the opposition research, I guess, on the Biden side was to hit Trump on uh, COVID, COVID, COVID. They got their uh, legacy media to participate in that. You can't turn any of those stations on COVID, COVID, COVID. As many people die, as many people are sick. Um, and I'm thinking, but you're the you're the expert. I'm thinking the uh, the campaign, the Biden campaign, has missed this. <laughs> missed this target by a mile that the majority of Americans don't want to shut the country down, don't want to close things down. They want to get out there and take the risks, small or large, whatever they may be, to provide for their family. What's going on with the thinking of the Biden strategists that think that attacking the COVID is a winning strategy? Well, well, here's the answer. They had nothing to run on. This is why the Democrats impeached a president for what Joe Biden did, for what he did in Ukraine. They had nothing. And after that went down in flames, what was Nancy Pelosi doing? Their next line of attack, according to Politico, they had the headline. The next line of attack against Trump was, let's convince America that the economy, the Trump-Pence economic boom, really wasn't as great as it uh that you think it is. So trying to get you to not believe your eyes, not believe your pocketbooks, not believe the tax cut you got and your business is growing. And then, and then the, the China plague hit, as President Trump calls it, which right. is exactly accurate. I mean, only a desperate, corrupt, crooked politician would use an infectious disease born out of a communist regime's cover-up that didn't just do it to us, they did it to the world. Only corrupt career crooked politicians who are only after power would politicize such a thing. And President Trump said it on the debate stage. It's not my fault. And Joe, it's not your fault. It's nobody's fault but China. And to politicize it and use American lives as just another weapon against their opponents, I think it's disgraceful. I think it's backfiring on them. I think people are sick and tired of it. And they have a perfect contrast. Just look at the red states. Just look at your state what Governor DeSantis did versus what Governor Cuomo did. Who did the better job there? Who protected the vulnerable? Who didn't sacrifice our constitution and our freedoms to fight a central planning virus out of communist China? Who didn't take a page from communist China's playbook? Republicans. We kept our freedom intact. We innovated. We've got therapeutics. We deployed the National Guard into nursing homes in Florida. We did the right thing. And President Trump always made the right decisions, not about politics, but for the country. That's why he shut down travel and they called him a racist and a bigot for it. 
well, that wasn't true then. It's not true now. And they had to admit months later that was the right call. A month after he shut down travel, Nancy Pelosi was saying, come to Chinatown. Only yeah. after they figured they, this is the only issue they could run on and politicize this, this thing. That's, that's all they have. And, you know, it's desperate and it's sad. But President Trump, he's going to win because Americans are smart and they see the truth. And they know this was nobody's fault but communist China. And they know President Trump made the right decisions and gave the resources to Governor Cuomo, gave it to Governor Newsom. It wasn't political for him. This was a problem, a fight that all Americans were facing. And that's why we're going to win with American ingenuity and our ideals. That's what's at stake here. And we cannot allow a plague from communist China as an excuse to let Marxists take over our streets. It's just an excuse for Democrats. It's just an excuse. We have to keep our freedoms here. We have to protect them. We have to vote for President Trump and Republicans up and down the ticket because it's very clear only one party is going to lock you out of your school, lock you out of your church, and decide who's essential and who's not. Well, I've got news for the Democrats. Government doesn't get to decide who's essential. Everyone's essential under God, and we all have equality under the law. That's what's at stake in this election. And the silent majority is going to show up big time to remind them of that. All right. Liz. Look, I know you got a hard, I know you got a hard stop. You got time for one quick question. Yeah. All right. You mentioned that we don't want to let the Marxists take over the country. Well, the white house is being boarded up, fenced up. DC is boarded up. What are your concerns for all this stuff we're hearing about the, uh, the Sunrise organizations and the Marxist organizations over the next few days shutting down uh, various parts of the country? Well, I know the president's aware of it. I know we're going to do what we have to to, to keep the, the peace. It, it's just such a disgusting shame after what they did to us, leaving the White House after the RNC and attacking Republicans. Um, I think they're going to do try to do worse. And unfortunately, Mayor Bowser uh, sounds like she's going to let them. We're not going to let them. We're going to restore order. This is not America. We have free and fair elections and you don't riot if you don't get your way and you don't burn churches down and you don't uh, attack political opponents. It has no place in our society, but they've done it all summer. And this is the left. And this is what's taken over the Democratic Party. We got to stand up and not be intimidated. And we got to do what's right. This is about right and wrong here. And we that's not America. We're free thought. This is a nation built on conscience rights, built on the idea that government can't tell you how to think. And that's what the left, they want to tell you how to think. And if you think differently, you better shut up and we'll censor you. That's what they're doing. And we cannot allow that to happen, whether it's big tech, the media, or the mob in the street. Absolutely not. We're going to reject it. We're not going to be intimidated. We're going to go out and vote today. We're going to give, deliver such a resounding victory for this president that they can't deny it. And they can't say it's Russia. They can't say it's anything else. They're going to have to accept our voices. They didn't accept it last time, but we're going to force them to accept it this time because it's going to be so overwhelming. America will remain the land of the free. Amen. Great, excellent, excellent message. Thank you so much for joining us. I know today. that we kept you on a little longer than uh, than we anticipated, but that's we all right. We so need much. Florida. We needed to hear what you had to say. No, I appreciate it so much. I appreciate what you all do. Everybody, just please get out and vote. We can do this thing. We can win this thing. We're in such a good position, but it's up to us. Get out and vote, everybody. Thank right. you, Liz. Have a great day. We look forward to celebrating and. Yep. Yeah, Tomorrow absolutely. we're going to so wake up to good news. All right, that's <laughs> absolutely. Liz Harrington, she's the spokesperson for the Republican National Committee, has done an amazing job um, mm -hmm. over the past couple of years. And uh, uh, perfect to have on the show today. It's 9.33 in the morning. That is the right time, right? 9.33 yes, in the Yes, it is. Yeah. And I see our buddy Anthony is here um, yesterday. Hey, Tom. Uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. May I offer one uh, line? I heard a perfect line this morning said Trump travels with the twins, law and order. <laughs> oh, that's, good. that's great, that's good. Mary. The twins, law yeah. and order. Um, well, we're going to see. I mean, I, I've been following the uh, the leaked information. And they don't even they don't even worry about saying how they're going to initiate 
what they're calling a, uh, a cultural or Marxist revolution, the other side. We're going we're gonna to get to some of that. Um, but I was saying, Anthony's here. Welcome, Anthony. Yay, everybody. Anthony. Welcome. Yesterday he was here before me because he didn't look at his phone. He looked at his clock and never said it back. Uh, yeah, I've so, done that uh, over the years. Uh, no. But now this clock is correct, <laughs> 933 WNN 1470. Much thanks to uh, Brian and Steve Kane. They deliver yeah. a nice audience for us. Uh, we're team, one team, one fight. And um, I think we got uh, a report from Michelle coming up. Is she here or what do we got? What? Let Anthony say something. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Anthony, Trump land slide. You. Trump land. Oh, he's got a mic. All right. Oh, okay. he's official. Do we have Michelle? Is she here? Is she coming? Did What's you the deal? contact Michelle? Then? She's not here yet. Mary, was gonna, Mary, were you Mary, you might want to call her. I'll see if I can get her. I saw Michelle on the way in this morning. <laughs> yeah, right. She was walking her little doggies. Oh, you did? Oh, that's right. You guys are in the same day. Um, she has a report, very interesting development in uh, Palm Beach yesterday. If you can contact her, Mary, we need her for about five minutes to uh, to do. give a report. Um, I'll take you over on, under on that. Oh, well, we'll just... Michelle, uh, contact Mary. She's probably listening. She listens to the show. Yeah. But this is a very, very important situation yesterday with on the issue of anti-Semitism in the public mm -hmm. schools in Palm Beach County. But uh, Anthony, you nervous or what's the situation? Uh, Trump's going to do it. All right, man. You're a, a New Yorker. What do you think um, New York? Staten gonna, Island, New York. What do you think is going to happen in New York? Uh, I think uh, Staten Island will. Re it's going for Trump. I don't know about the rest of the city, but Staten Island, where I'm from, all Trump out there. I made I had I made a wager with someone here yesterday, Tom. I think you witnessed it that someone actually bet that Trump would win New York State, which is absolutely unheard of. Of course, I took Biden for New York because you know New York and California are, you know, have been Democrat states since before I've been born. Um, yeah, I think that's going to be really rough. Well, you're from states. New York, too. I'm from New York. So, as New well. York, New, you're from where? You, I'm from Brooklyn originally. Brooklyn. I'm from Queens. New York, New, you, you three are from New York, New Jersey, and then we got a Midwestern. <laughs> Indiana. Midwest. And we vote right you guys every have running year. running toilets. You got running yeah, toilets. Yeah, we vote right for the president every year. <laughs> I think they every even have year. electricity. You got electricity the where public. you come from? <laughs> You got you got cows and you learned how to land. drive on a tractor. Yeah, yeah I, I I tipped a few cows, which is <laughs> which is impossible to do, by the way. You really can't tip a cow. Tip admit. A cow. <laughs> um, oh, all right, well, funny. Michelle's so on Anthony, her way. you're thinking uh, Staten Island is five boroughs. That's one of the borough of uh, New York City, uh, my town of New Jersey, and it, uh, it it ain't going for Trump. I don't think uh, it's it's becoming even more leftist in many respects. Though there are more Trump voters than in 16, which is important. The popular vote is a, is a consideration. If we could remove the popular vote as being a, a, a predicate for rioting, even though it's irrational historically and constitutionally, it helps in terms of the stability of, uh, of the country. So what do we want to do? I got a lot of stuff. Uh, I have a question. Let's talk about why we th who we think is going to win and why. Well, let me ask you a quick question. If, 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 big if. If the Democrats take the House, the Senate, the White House, do you think they're going to try to get rid of the Electoral College? Yes. 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 Oh yeah, and, and the Constitution. And they're, going to, they're going to add more. Sen they're going to add two more states. Try to add two more states to the union. Get four more senators, and it's it's just going to be a mess. For those they're listeners that um, might want more information about the Electoral College, the Electoral College is what um, there are votes from each state, so that this full represents representation from the entire country if you don't have an electoral vote then really the big states where most of the population is is going to decide who the next president's going to be new york so that california. means that like what is new yorkers who are living in manhattan really uh care about maybe farmlands they don't have enough information they only they view the world just from their sphere whereas what we are is a very diverse country and uh so that's why there's an electoral college so that all voices are represented so you know for those people who who say, oh yeah, get rid of it. It's not the popular vote is what counts. The popular vote is just in those big states. We don't want them making decisions for the whole country. You don't Susan want California Gold. deciding for the country. Susan Gold teaching constitutional law. <laughs> <laughs> you, 
<laughs> you don't want California that's on fire yeah. and uh, has human feces and rolling, needles rolling and blackouts. rolling blackouts. To you don't want those policies that. for the rest of the country. Yeah, see, that's uh, 930 in the morning. Tom Trento, your host with Susie Gold. We, again, I keep saying we need more time. Yeah. But, um, and we got uh, in the booth, we got Damon Rosen, um, our Aliya guy, went yeah. up. Yeah. And he's came back, back. Down here now for a little came while. Back. He's going to go back up to Jerusalem, came back down. And Mark and Anthony. And it looks like we have some chaos on the screen uh there she in. is, there beautiful she is. Michelle. Looking like, what am I doing? Where am I? What's going on? Can yeah, the people yeah, see her yet? Not yet. Not I don't yet. think we'll she can hear us no, either. The camera. But anyway, um, yeah, let me give you the Florida numbers. Here's the Florida numbers. As of right now, ladies and gentlemen, 4.6 million absentee ballots have been cast. 4.6 million. Of that, 2.1 are Democrats. 1.4 are Republicans. Republicans behind an absentee, 700,000 votes as of today. Caveat, because someone casts a Democrat ballot doesn't mean they voted for Biden. Right. Okay. It's, it's a Democrat ballot. It comes back. They're listed as a Democrat. We know Democrats are going to be voting for Trump. But yep. let's say everybody votes according to the paper. We're behind Republicans, 700,000 votes. 1.3 million have not been returned. So there's still 1.3 million absentees that were, were requested. We don't have universal mail-in. Of the 1.3, 600,000 are Democrats. 400,000 are Republicans. They got to be in by 7 o'clock tonight. We don't have three days, four days, none of that nonsense. My guess is a lot of those people, that million people, 600,000 Democrat, 400,000 Republican, said, I'm going to vote. I'm, you know, I don't trust this thing. They ordered it. That's what I did. And they, yeah, like you. Yeah, exactly. So that's a skewed number. But here's a big number. 4.3 million votes have already <laughs> been cast in early voting. Yep. So we got 4.6 in mail-in, 4.3. That's 9 million votes have already been cast. Out of 17 million. No, right? out of 14 million registered 14 people. Million. 14 million. 14 million. Of the 4.3 million where people have walked like me uh, uh, into the uh, voting booth, 2 million are Republican, 1.5 are Democrat. Two to one. Two to one. So not two to one, no. Um, we're, we're, a we're a half a million ahead, but we were 700,000 ahead uh, behind in absentees. We're only 200,000 votes behind. Oh, we're going to crush it. And yeah. historically, Republicans come out to vote on election day. Well, this is looking great, but and, you got to get out. And, and here's where the numbers are coming from is right now we're already 60% of the voting capacity, all in a nutshell. We average hit 75% in our highest peak. Okay. We're going to blow this number away. And that number is, can only come from one, one portion of the segment, which did not vote at the 75% level, and that was evangelical Christians at 50%. Now, I think they're voting up right around 75, 80%. I think that's where the number difference is coming from, and if those are 85%, 85% yep. easily. If the Christians are voting at anything over 50%, yeah, it's game time. This is it. It's over. It's completely well, over. That's show, what our campaign has yeah, been. Right. And let me show you. Two years. Let, let me give you a Let's bring little, in little, Michelle. Little, little, one yeah, second. Yeah, Michelle's second. waiting patiently. Hi, Michelle. One second. Michelle Terrace is the founder and one president second. of Jexit. I just wanted to show, to, to put, a, put a stamp on this, is I'm showing a video right now that I took this morning. It's 45 Polling seconds. station. There hasn't been a line here since I moved here. That's about a half hour long. Wow. Amazing. Truly amazing. Catch it all the way around. Look at that. Wow. Here, wow. That's, that's my polling station, which is a very small polling location. And that line was a half hour long. And it actually took me 45 minutes to get through it. But I think those lines are going to go way, way down by 2 o'clock and stuff like that. So you should be able to get in really quick, you know, after the show and everything like that. Wow. Thanks so much, Mark. I'm so glad you took that footage. That's great. It's so and it's so encouraging to see yeah. it all the sites at this such long line. He's a videographer. Look at yeah, that's unbelievable. Work, yep. Yep. Always yeah, in yeah, always sure. in the right place, the right time, and, and doing good work. Um, we have Michelle Terrace, who is the president and founder of Jexit. That's Jews exiting the Democrat Party. How are you doing this morning? 
I'm doing great. Um, Did you vote? Of course I voted. Yay. <laughs> and my children, my children, first time voters, they were clapping in the poll booth. It was great. That's Very great. Very excited. Yeah. And I mean, some uh, people are waiting till today to stand in line and vote. So I also voted. I actually, uh, I ac had an absentee ballot, but I went in, put it in the box at one of the polling stations. So well, Anthony voted. You went, you went today, right, Anthony? Right after this. Right after so this. Right so after you're this. one of those guys. Okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And you had some excitement yesterday at the school board. Tell us what happened. I, I was going to say, I normally vote on election day, but there was such hype and excitement. I couldn't wait to get to the polls to just check it out and see what was going on. So I was an early voter. Um, yesterday, it's very interesting, um, your topic that you were just discussing about the turnout and the, and the numbers, because there's a parallel between that and yesterday. The outcry from the public was the greatest ever in Palm Beach County. Tom, I don't know, and, and I don't, uh, Susie, I don't know if you know that. There were like 1,300 emails sent and a thousand voices heard. And the, uh, you know, people stood together and we got something done. We got something taken care of. And it kind of reminds me of the beginning of the campaign starting in 2018 after DeSantis was, re was elected. We saw people afraid to come out and, you know, support and, and get on the Trump train, if you will. Look at the boat. Look at the, you know, the trucks and the bikes and all the, the, the blacks for Trump, the Latins for Trump. It was kind of reminiscent of that yesterday with the people that came out, stood up and that, are con and, and that aren't afraid to speak anymore because there's strength in numbers. And we have to continue to empower people to do that. And that's where I think we've succeeded. All right. And the situation that uh, Michelle is talking about is the um, uh, school board, Palm Beach County School Board, had a meeting to determine the future, the fate of um, Principal Latson, who was the principal at Spanish River High School. And about a year or two ago, uh, he made in response to some students asking questions, he made a statement that as, uh, as an educator in a public school, he can't um, confirm whether or not the Holocaust actually happened. Really? And this is in a Jewish district, you know, in Palm Beach County and boom, Everything went uh, through the roof. And what happened at that point and what happened yesterday, Michelle? Well, yesterday we showed up, uh, Lori Cardoza-Moore, uh, Lauren Gross, ZOA, a, a bunch of representatives from different organizations, as well as just regular concerned citizens, parents, and so on. And the uh, they, they each person got an opportunity. One minute, they only gave us one minute. If we went over, they sort of, you know, sounded a little horn or whatever it was but it was so emotional i mean even today i i woke up and and the only thing i could literally say was i can't believe that this is happening in 2020 that we are defending the holocaust that to me is just mind-boggling I, I can't believe it and uh we everybody you know stood their ground and they did they took a vote and and it it was uh, rescinded, seven to nothing. Well, what was rescinded? What the folks don't know what he, uh, what the situation. He's is. fired again for a second he, time. He got fired again mm -hmm. for a second yeah. time. Um, yeah. And most likely won't be teaching in Palm Beach County. Uh, he'll get his back pay and all of that stuff. And I don't think there's going to be any repercussions there. But um, it was an anti-Semitic, obviously an anti-Semitic situation. The community, not just Jewish people, mm -hmm. Christians got together. We community had a community banded a, a, together. Remember, we had a rally back in December on mm -hmm. the same issue. Yep. Um, and if you look at the the two parties, the Democrat Party, the Republican Party, I mean, the Democrat Party is an anti-Semitic party. We right. we we the, Nancy Pelosi tried to put a document together to, uh, condemning anti-Semitism of Ilhan Omar. But you had to water that down yeah, and condemn yeah. all hate speech everywhere, which is yeah, nothing. Right. So Joe Biden gets in, really, if uh, Kamal Harris gets in, uh, you're, Jewish people are going to have a hard time. Christians are going to mm -hmm. have a hard time. That's right. And, and yesterday, yesterday, there was some watered down messages from the board members. If I had, if I could do it all over again, I'm not sure I would say what I said. I, I might have been more harsh, but it was effective. Uh, in the meantime... This president supported a rogue policy of allowing K 
kids to opt out of mandatory Holocaust curriculum. A lot of things came out yesterday. There's there's a lot more going on behind the scenes. I can tell you this, that we're working with Laurie Cardoza Moore uh, to pushing to um, for his certification to be revoked. And I wanted to just mention the next hearing is on the 10th at 11 a.m. We need people to show up. We can't speak, but as you know, our presence will speak volumes. We're not going to stop. This is this is a momentum, and this is something that we are going to work together with these organizations, as we have done with you. Look how successful we've been. Because the truth of the matter is, together we're stronger, and there is strength in numbers. And we've proved we proved it. We can never be silent mm -hmm. again. That's right. And you're right, Michelle, that unity is so important. We've got to do this all together and be one strong voice. One strong so voice. thank you for being there. Thank you to all the organizations that stood behind on this particular issue. And, uh, and we will, I think that all of us are so much more united than, than we ever were before. So thank God for that. Thank you for the good work that you're doing with Jexit. And when we unite, we can defeat the left. We can mm -hmm. do that if mm -hmm. we unite. Yeah. One team, one fight. One, one team, team, one fight. One fight. One Thank you, Michelle. Thanks for joining in. They're great. They're great motivating factors. Thanks, Michelle. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you. Michelle. Thank Nine, you. 949 in the morning. I want to get to the predictions. I want everybody's prediction. Um, but I think we have a Biden, uh, Hunter Biden uh, commercial we got to play right about and now. And we have a Trump commercial. Too. And we have a Trump commercial. and Whatever we got. Let's play those. Then I want to get to the uh, predictions. These hours fly by. Oh, this is the Israel. This is the Israel rally. That's my peeps in Israel rallying for Trump in uh, the old city Look of Jerusalem. Oh, yeah, motorcycle rally. The Jerusalem. What we're looking at right now is a motorcycle rally. Look at the numbers. This Look one happens this. to be in the old city that's 20 million years old in Jerusalem. Hey, David, what uh, the expats there, like you, a U.S. citizen, how would you vote if you were still over there? Well, the way I voted from here for Trump, the vast majority of Americans. No, not who you would vote for. Physically, how do you oh, do Oh, you it go to the U.S. Embassy. And what, and what do you do? Uh, well, you go to the U.S. Embassy and you fill out your ballot, just oh, like really? you would for your own district here, basically. Okay. So you don't have to mail it or anything. You just go right to the embassy and you And vote you drop right it off? You drop your ballot at the embassy? I believe you can actually uh, get it there, fill it out, and uh, they mail it back to the States they, for you. They record it. Okay. They keep possession. Oh. They keep a right. uh, chain of custody of That's it. important to yeah, know. That's pretty cool. Yeah, very cool. All right, we have the Biden uh, commercial, um, Hunter Biden. While you're yeah, looking for it, let's get some predictions on uh, November 3rd, 2020, the last day. This yeah. is amazing. Oh, my God. This is amazing. Um, wow. Damon Rosen, who's going to be the next person? I'm going to start off by being the spoiler. Okay. And uh, I believe after four years of the corrupt mainstream media uh, slandering and lying and uh, trying to destroy Donald Trump, and the uh, collusion with big tech, particularly the social media giants, not giving uh, the American public the truth. You know, just let's just take the Hunter Biden laptops and the truth about Joe Biden's corruption and the mainstream media, you know, calling it Russian collusion again, as if they didn't have enough from the false Russia uh, collusion delusion early on. I believe that uh, I, I don't have enough confidence in the American voter, and I attribute it to the mainstream media and social media. I believe that uh, Joe Biden will be the next president of the United States for about five minutes until Kamala Harris takes over. I, wow, that was right. a downer. All right. All right. I believe in the American people. I believe in the American people so strong. It's going to be 324 electoral vote count. 324. 324. Wow. It's going to be a landslide. I think we're going to come close to capturing the House and uh, we're going to hold the Senate. And I think we're going to lose the Senate. <laughs> wow. Anything Debbie else, Downer Damon? Here, man. Is this guy going to fall too? <laughs> Is this well, guy going to fall too? <laughs> I, I'm going to, I, I strongly believe that Trump is going to win. And most Americans vote historically 
due to the economy and jobs. In now we had COVID thrown into the mix. So we have to say, who has the ability, who has the brains, who has the experience, the knowledge to bring the economy back stronger than ever? And that's Trump. And who recognizes that the United States is a beacon of light to the rest of the world? That's Trump. So, um, so he's a rock star. And, uh, and, and, and President Trump is going to win. I think, I think the stock market is going to play a big role in this. And since the stock market is doing well, that's why I believe Trump will win. Okay, that's Anthony. So we got Anthony Trump. We have um, Mark Trump, Susie Trump, and Damon Biden. Um, and, and what do you say? And, Mary, we got Mary. We got to get yeah, Mary in there. And Mary. Uh, I fully believe Trump is going to win. I think Minnesota was a prime example of what the Democrats want to do to us. And with Biden and Hunter Biden messages recently, just showing exactly who he is with China and the, uh, the way they locked us down and they're actually advertising that taxes are going to be raised. They're actually in ad campaigns saying that masks will be mandated. I think the American public is saying, yep. no, not on my watch. And we, before okay, we go so to Mary's Tom's prediction, we're going to play the Hunter Biden commercial. So Tom, no, I don't think, I don't think we have time. time. We're not going to have time. Because, we be, no, we don't have time because okay. my prediction is based upon three Ps, principles, pennies, and patriotism. If you um, look at the country and say, which party is more patriotic? Which party is more concerned about pennies, the economy? Anthony, your point. Which party is more based on principle? And you conclude, well, you take a look at globally at the country and you say the Republican Party leans in favor of that. Um, so you got to lean toward Trump. I'm leaning toward Trump. I'm, I'm voting Trump is going to win. But here's why. And now I'll go back to theology and my shirt. Um, as a student of the Bible and of uh, Hebrew history, God took the nation of Israel and put him through various periods. When, when, he, when the nation was looking up at God, he was very merciful and gracious toward them and great things happened. When they turned their back on him, um, the judgment of God um, came. Same God, just different dirt, <laughs> different year. And uh, I think Trump is going to win. But I have the same feelings Damon has. I think Trump's going to win, and we're going to see the mercy of God for four more years. Mercy means he's withholding something from us that we deserve, judgment. If Trump loses, we're going to see the judgment of God in this country like you've never seen. And, and the judgment also often comes at the hands of the victor in the battle. It'll be at the hands of the Democrats against the country. So I'm voting for Trump because I think God still is going to be merciful and give us a shot. And uh, I hope to celebrate, you know, yeah. in a couple of days. I got the Hunter Biden thing. Playing nah, we don't want to. We don't want to play that right now. Hey. So, Susie, now you got about a minute. Take us out of here, will you? Well, I uh, trust the American people. I trust that Trump is going to win. And uh, all of those who have not voted, go out there, vote Republican. And, um, and while you're at it, go on the unitedwest.org site, click on the donate button, because you know what? After today, we're going to be dealing with the, the aftermath of this election. Lawsuits. The Marxists are still out. They are still out to capture this country. In fact, I heard uh, Sanders this morning, uh, talk, Bernie Sanders, talk about, you know, that they mean business, that they are out for their agenda, for socialism. They want Medicare for all. They want they want to take away our guns. So this isn't going to go away. Equality We've got to outcome. fight it. Donate to the United West. Org. Good show. All right, everybody. Get out and vote. One hour show is just not enough. <laughs>